Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis, video number 49. And in this video, we're going to do hypothesis testing for a proportion. And this is our last video for chapter 9. We got to do hypothesis testing for a proportion. Here's our question. The school newspaper stated that the proportion of students who knew when the presidential election would be held was 15%. Our researcher thought that this was low and wanted to show that the proportion of students who knew when the presidential election would be held is higher than 15%. The researcher took a random sample and made sure he got respondents from all of the different demographics, including night students, online students, new immigrants, and others. At alpha 0.01, can the researcher conclude that more than 15% of the students know when the presidential election will be held? Now, one thing the researcher probably did is they thought, well, this seems really low. Maybe they made a, an error when they sampled. The population being sampled maybe didn't include some of the groups. So when the researcher went out, they made sure to try and do a true random sample that really sampled the actual population at this school. Here's our hypothesized population proportion, 0.15. Now, before we set up our test, we got to look at the point of view and the goal. The point of view is a researcher who is skeptical of a reported proportion of the number of students who knew when the presidential election was. So that's our point of view. Our goal, test to see if there's significantly more than 15% of the students who knew when the presidential election would be held. Again, significance, that means we have to pass that hurdle before we reject the null and accept the alternative. The more than 15%, that phrasing or that thinking of what we're doing here helps us set up the null and alternative hypothesis. So I'm going to come right down to the alternative. So is the proportion greater than 15%? Once we know the alternative, we go up to the null hypothesis and flip it. Less than or equal to the equal sign always goes with the null hypothesis. Our alpha is going to be 0 0.01. We want to be super sure here. We want to set the hurdle high. Remember, if the alpha is low, then the hurdle is high. Type 1 error is reduced when we increase alpha, which means we have a less of a chance of rejecting the null hypothesis, even though it was true. All right, now we need to come up and make some calculations from our sample. We have a, a sample, yes or no, knew when the election was. I'm going to count the yeses and the nos. Use the function count if. Count not everything, but count if some condition is met. So the range, I'm going to click in that top cell, control shift down arrow, and F4 to lock it, comma. And I've set up my criteria yes and then no on top of each other. So I'm going to click there as a relative cell reference. Control Enter, and then when I copy it down, we have 36 and 116. This is our total. So I'm going to say the part divided by the whole, F4. So we have a probability yes of about 2.4 and about 0.76. So we come down here. We have step one, step two, step three. We have our 0.2368. That'll be our p bar. We have to calculate standard error. And uh, the formula is page 28 in the PDFs, but here it is right here. We've done this in earlier chapters. Square root, and we're going to take our, actually, want to go up and get it from our source, our place right here. p times 1 minus, and then divide by n, close parentheses. And our standard error is going to be 0 0.0289. Now we can calculate our test statistic. The Whatever our statistic is minus the hypothesized parameter divided by the standard error in parentheses. There's our p-bar minus our hypothesized proportion up there. Close parentheses divided by our standard error. Wow, so we got 2.9. Now, the distribution we use for proportion is the Z distribution. So that's 2.9, almost three standard deviations above. You can already guess. I mean, this is the seventh or eighth test we've done in this chapter. That's way above, three standard deviations above. So we're 
probably rejecting the null and accepting the alternative. Let's go ahead and calculate our p value. Now if we calculate a p from this, this is on the upper end and we want the probability above it, so we have to do 1 minus and back to our norm dot. So I need my s for the standardized normal distribution. So there I have my z comma 1 cumulative. It will calculate all the way up to this, which is a lot, and then 1 minus that will give us our probability. So, so this value here is amazingly small, which means it gives us very strong evidence that we should reject the null and accept the alternative. We compare it directly up to here and obviously much smaller. Norm dot s dot inverse. And our probability, well, we're on the upper end, so we need to say 1 minus our alpha. Our critical value is 2.32. So comparing that, anytime our test statistic is greater than or equal to this, we reject the null and accept the alternative. Because the p of approximately 0.0014 is less than or equal to our alpha, we reject the null and accept the alternative. If we're using our, our critical value rule, because the test statistic 2.99, almost it's three standard deviations in essence, is greater than or equal to the critical value of 2.33, we reject the null and accept the alternative. There is strong statistical evidence to support the claim that more than 15% of the students know when the presidential election will be held. Said a different way, at alpha of 0 0.01, our sample proportion of about 0.24 provides very strong statistical evidence to suggest that more than 15% of the students know when the presidential election will be held. And finally, we do run a 1% type one error risk of saying that more than 15% of the students know when the election will be when in fact they do not know. Now again, once you get a p-value like this, this is very strong evidence. All right, that's hypothesis testing for a proportion. We've done a lot in chapter 9. We'll see you next video.